Yo ho ho! I'm here with Matt. What's going on, bro? Hey! Uh, hello. I don't know where that was going. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're looking at the polls. We're going to see what you're saying. And we're going to judge it. And it should be good because you subscribe. So you should have some good opinions. But if not, then subscribe. They should be coming out daily at 2 p.m. Standard Eastern Time. You ready to know? Let's you get it There you go. Okay, let's go. All right. Which would be more hype? Flashy taking the blessing or Sonic taking the blessing? No, I haven't voted, so I'm going to vote live right now. Make this to 117 because Sonic <laughs> taking the blessing will definitely... What? <laughs> okay. Flashy? I get, yeah. I get, like, because Flashy's stronger, but the story would be better if Sonic took the blessing. Would it? That's where the hype is. Yeah. It's well, more interesting. Sonic all of a sudden becomes, like, big bad Sonic. True. Would you expect him to beat uh, Empty Void or, or Cosmic? I know. But if he beats Flashy, that's already, that, that's more entertaining right there. Yeah, it is. I think I think that oh, would actually not, probably give us a good go ahead. Not for the reason that you think because you don't like Flashy. I want about for the reason of like, oh, Flashy's got another goal and it's more it's more entertaining that he tries to like it would build him up of he beats like the golden generations, not the golden the per the last basically the ultimate ninja just by taking this. Shit, bro. Uh, I was going the route of if Sonic takes it. <clears throat> it brings more light to like the whole question of how strong do you really get from a blessing like is he just really giving like any arbitrary amount of power is it a certain amount like was homeless that strong because he was like a regular human before and he would have been stronger if he was like powerful like how much power is he really giving you i think that would have given us it would shown some light on that question if sonic would have got it but flashy bro he's the stronger one so to me, it would have been another menace like Empty Void out there for the guys to deal with. Yeah, I don't well, because that's what I mean. We've already got Empty Void, and like they could obviously do some cool like light stuff with Flashy if he monsterized. There's no doubt on that. Um, but they could also do cool sound stuff with Sonic if he monsterized too. It's like it's it's generally just like down to prefer. But like if they made like a, more of a sound, literally focus on the sound aspect of Sonic. That could be interesting if you monsterized. Ooh, okay. Um, Again, what are people... Sorry, go on. It's your yeah. podcast. No, no, yeah, yeah. We'll have, we'll have a turn in a second. I was thinking, though... Um... No, wait, 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 wait. All right. So, Bayard6954 says, Sonic, definitely. All right, bro. Um, and then, win the lottery 4685. Def Sonic, a struggle f for power and constant failures feels more real and would be better led up to him succumbing and throwing away his humanity for the for, for the second time. IDKY pre-redraw Flash is one to cave in, is the one to cave in, and Sonic is the sober one. Because hmm. he's pussy, bro. Just, well, he's been shaken up more. Like, he's had... He's, like, he's had his core shaken a few times, where Sonic's kind of used to that. Like... Well, I mean, it's like, you know, Flash was like, I'm the fastest. Then, Saitama, Blast, Platinum, Gara, all showed up went, no, you're not. And then, but, the difference is Sonic kind of accepted that he's got, rather than just be like, I'm faster than you, except that he's got a goal. Because he was like, right, I'm going to beat you, Saitama. He recognized Saitama was better, wants to work towards beating him. Ah, so, so Sonic's kind of at the point where Flash he should be getting to. Yeah, well, like, there's definitely more of an emotional maturity, I think, to Sonic than there is to Flash. I mean, like, there's jokes about it, but... No, that's the case. Even when they were kids, it was Sonic who took the lead. Mm-hmm, yeah. Do you want to read uh, half of these, or do you want to... Yeah, I can more? read, I don't mind. Yeah. Um, I'm not... Well, Marshall's just, like, more of this content, so... Yeah, there you go. It's happening. Uh, the Blue White Sky. Uh, it's better if it's going to be Sonic, because Sonic is the one who feels weaker than Flashy and tries to become stronger. This will... Uh, this... Uh, this will update him. This update to him will give an interesting results for the story. Like, how would Flashy react to the new Sonic? Would Sonic feel confident to fight Saitama with the update? Did he even think about that? Would he actually become a villain like Empty Void, or would he use his power against Empty Void? Um, no, like, 
I think it'd be funny to see him try and find Saitama, but I would be a bit concerned that the fight would be too similar to Garo's, where it's not like an actual fight, and it's actually just trying to about like get the human side out of him. And no, like if he turned, like if they turn, they're not resisting that way. For sure, I don't think they would. But that'd be badass if it did happen. <clears throat> but I kind of think that like um. Is, are you saying that like you're tired of of the whole like trying to turn them back because that's kind of the whole point that we're getting at here? Blast showed us that you can. No, turn... I'm, I'm not. No, I'm not tired at all about. It. I'm very interested in that aspect. What I mean is, in that in that fictional scenario, if Sonic monsterized and fought Saitama, my problem would be with that fight happening is it would probably be too similar to Saitama versus Garo, where there's some tension in the fight. But ultimately, you know, Saitama's not going to because he's like, he recognizes the human side of Sonic. That's what I mean. Like, how he recognizes the human side of Garo and didn't kill him, but he recognizes the human side of Sonic. That's all I meant. It's like in that fictional fight, I wouldn't be as interested to see it as I think after. I, like, the first one in my head is Monster Rise Sonic versus Saitama. Fuck yeah, sounds incredible. But then I thought for a second, when actually, no, not that, not that interesting to me. Next, we have Flashy Flash versus Elder Centipede. I made this question because in the five-hour top 30 stream that we did, some of the people in the Discord spent quite a bit of time trying to push the incorrect narrative that Sonic and Flashy Flash were now at a level that not only were they stronger than Platinum Sperm, but they could also easily defeat Elder Centipede. I wanted to expose how ridiculous it was that they had this opinion with a poll, and this is how unridiculous it was. He still garnered 41% of the vote. Do you not think uh, you were playing any favorites with the image choices? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm like, I, I, I respect there might be some slight bias unintentionally, but then you've literally got him like menaced over three S class heroes, and then you have Flashy on the ground. Like, I think there's some favoritism there, mate. Like, you could have. You, you've. If, I'm, look. I agree with what you're saying. I think I agree that Elder said speed over Flashy. I think you may have had some influence on the result. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bro, it's ridiculous. You just implied that Flashy may have garnered more of the vote if I didn't put that picture there. That's crazy. Bro. I think it. I think it might have. No, like, yeah, genuinely. Yeah. Like, I think, like, it's a, it's a psychological thing. Bro. That's as ridiculous as people thinking that Flashy can be EC, bro. As ridiculous. It's not, mate. Mate, it's it's lit it's psychology, mate. <laughs> Spectre 3138 says, I think that eventually Trashy can do something if he keeps attacking the critical spot. But Centipede is never catching Trashy. I have to let it pass because he used he prefaced it by saying Trashy twice, but still, bro, like what are we <laughs> pretending about? I think that is a valid point though, is like in defense of Flashy, how can Elder Centipede hit? Like, in some ways, it's like almost they can't beat each other because it's similar to well. Sorry, let me rephrase that. So, Flashy can't really do any damage to Elder Centipede, but there's also no way Elder Centipede's hitting Flashy, right? I mean, the the difficult part about a conversation or a debate is that we're looking or thinking about the characters in a static scenario, but the reality is is that the Genos that fought Goro was pretty goddamn fast. And I'm pretty sure a lot of us would already argue that the Goro that fought the AB8 heroes, the Goro that fought Bang right there, the Goro that fought Genos, that... EC probably couldn't catch that Goro either. But not only did Genos catch that Goro, that EC caught that Genos. So I don't think it's as clear as to say that, like, because of this character's portrayed top speed in a certain scenario, that another monster wouldn't be able to catch him. He's shown feats. In, in one of we, hang on. Because what I'm taking away from that group is you think that EC is as fast, is fast enough to catch Flashy? He's got those speed feats. Like, I mean, he did fight, but look, in, in fairness to EC, he did fight fast to pretty much a standstill. Let's give him that. Like, uh -huh. Let's not like, let's not take that away. Mm -hmm. But Flashy's whole thing is he's fast. If there's one thing you say about Flash, he's fast. Like, I, I don't, I like, I guess he's big and he covers ground. He's not Flashy fast. No, no doubt. I, I, I won't go as far as to say that. I will go as far as to say that. I do think he can affect Flashy, and I don't think Flashy can 
do that much damage to him. The, he got blown up from the inside, and it it didn't do anything. I don't think cutting him a few times in the same spot is going to take him out. I think Flash's biggest problem is the inability to land a critical hit on something that big, because we've seen like EC take a lot of damage and recover really fast from it. That's the biggest problem. Like, I don't think Flashy could necessarily slice him in half. You know, that's probably like a big problem for him. I don't disagree with you on there. Strategic Massey three four two nine doesn't either. He says, "What the hell is Flashy gonna do though?" Funny. Um, then we got Marshall. Marshall says, Flashy has the speed... Oh, this is ridiculous. This is going to be some broken, incorrect analysis. Let me give him the benefit of that doubt, even though he doesn't deserve it. Flashy has a speed advantage, and his relatively small size makes it impossible for EC to deal with him. His AP is also high enough to injure EC. The only problem is how large EC is and his region, which means he needs to outspeed his healing. Due to EC's tanky... Tankiness. Tankiness, yeah. <laughs> In size, it might prove difficult for Flashy. I can see him making EC mode at least once after a long time of rapid strikes. Flash out stats, matchup doesn't favor him. Completely disagree. What do you? No, no, not completely. He does have some like I. He's basically kind of saying similar to what we was what we were saying, which is like Flash is faster and he's small, so it's difficult to hit. Uh, but EC's large. He's got the regen. I think that's fair. Um, I. I guess the way like if you really want to play to Flashy, is if Flashy observed that he when he regenerates as an opening but he would also have to create that opening and flashy could be fast enough to do both but once again like the whole point is ec gets stronger each time like ec's armor comes back even more dead like even stronger each time it, um if it regenerates so yeah it's still ec but i but it's a good argument for flashy i'm not denying that I mean, the only thing, the last thing I'll say on my personal end before we continue to read here is that we saw Sage, somebody who's much, much slower than Goro at that time period, or Metal Bat at that time period, hit them both. Like, we wouldn't have imagined him being able to strike any of them, but it happened. Same thing with EC versus Genos, another person who we would have assumed and we saw as much faster than EC, but he still captured him, he still caught him, he still hit him. So I'm not under any illusion that these guys can't hit speedsters. Again, as you pointed out, he fought Blast, so... Cool. Right. Okay, I'll read out Guy Logan. Uh, that's an interesting question. Flashy should probably beat EC as he is more powerful, but Meta Knight should have also been able to beat EC since he supposedly had nuclear capabilities, yet he was turned to scrap metal. So Flashy with high difficulty. It would be interesting to see if full power Flashy could slice right through EC. Otherwise, he'd probably only do as much damage as Bang, which is nothing. Which is, yeah. We don't even know. We don't know who beat Meta Knight, though. Right? We. We just we just we just see him in scraps, uh, so it could have been anyone. It could have been, it could have been EC. It could have been Orochi. We don't know. I think the story heavily implied Orochi, and he said it. Yeah. The fact that like he was complaining, he was like, so he was like, um, we shouldn't be playing around with Orochi. Like, we should just nuke the shit. That's fair. Yeah, and he was hanging on by Orochi. So yeah, cool. Uh, just quickly, Rene Carmel clap. Uh, Metal back claps both of. Let's pull one for a real G. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the rest are you, bro. Cool. Uh, you a bit. Unclear how so Bayard again. Unclear how far uh, EC's region goes. I'd say pretty far. Bang and Bomb together are definitely stronger than Flashy alone. And if they could kill EC with attack, meant the big dudes, Flashy's thin blade won't be enough. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah like, like I said, I think there's there's a decent. I think people who are arguing Flashy. It's not like they're making bad arguments. Their their reasoning is sound, but I think the EC, like what the things that we know EC can do, sticks up for it. Over, I think I think outweighs the flashy stuff. One hundred percent. Next we have will Flashy and Sonic clap one another if the other gets blessed. So how how likely is a fight between Sonic and and Flashy if either of them get blessed? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, like, the whole point is you give them to any got dark desires. And even if, like, they are secretly friends, there might be some animosity depending on how it ended in the village. So, yeah. I hope, like, not just from, like, a story of, like, wouldn't it be cool to see these two fight. Just, it would make sense because people just kind of freak. Especially, we've seen people freak out the moment they turn to monsters. They, like, it's given to dark thoughts on, like, a, they're, like, an evil high. So, yeah, I think a fight would definitely happen between them. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing it either, but... 
more so on the on the end if uh, Sonic gets blessed, because if if Flashy gets blessed, there's already not much of a competition there. Yeah, definitely. Corey's just going over the comments on this. Um, they'll have to unless Sonic goes straight to Saitama and gets his arc over with. Yeah, I mean, do you think Saitama's going to show up, or do you think he's? Do you think Saitama will be involved at any point now? I'll ask you this. Or do you think we are just leaving Saitama out of this ninja arc for now? I, I'm i leaning towards, and my personal preference are both no, because it's been so sporadic whenever he shows up. It's more so aligns towards a climactic moment. But right now, we're, I'm, I'm still feeling the whole setup stage. Like, we're still setting up the big obstacle or the big dilemma and the, intricacy, and the intricacies of that dilemma before we can allow Saitama to just throw a wrench into things. Yeah, I think that's true. I think we'll have to see Dre because we haven't really seen Blast properly handle the situation. Like we see, like because he was dipping in and out of the in and out of Monster Association. Like to see how he handles it will depend on if we're ready for Saitama or not. Next question we have: Golden Sperm versus Overgrown Rover. Oof. Golden Sperm winning with seventy-seven percent. I don't agree with that. I think I do agree with that. What's up? Everything about Gold Sperm is built up to be like this guy. Like the whole point is, he is tanky beyond belief. But like, I'm not saying Rover isn't, but but tank like he he out tanks the tank. If I have to try and okay, I'll try and break it down. So Garo punches Rover with the set, he shakes it off. Garo throws those same punches at Dark Shine. He like they do nothing, and that's like a slightly powered up. Like he's not hurting him. As he grows stronger, he starts being able to hurt Darkshine. But at that point, Darkshine also gets outclassed by far by Golden Spur. So I'm not saying there isn't power there, but I think the power does lean on Golden Spur's side. The only, the part that we disagree on is the very first one. The punch that Gro gave to, to Rover, the sit punch to knock him down, because he got right back up from it, I disregard that as like nothing. To me, what I consider a good parameter for Rover is the Saitama punch. Because he also got up from that and then went on to fight Bang and Bomb, boosted up by Fubuki, and, and was perfectly fine. And that? the fight that fight ended by them saying sit, not because they like beat him down or did anything to him. So that's I, I'm still on the fence as to what can actually hurt Rover besides Saitama. Well, yeah, because well, that's like Pavlovian, isn't it? Like he last time he got told to sit, he didn't, and he got hurt. So when he said sit next time, it was like, oh, actually, yeah, I don't want to get hurt. Again. <laughs> yeah, that's generally what it was. It was just it was literally Saitama trained him. That's what it was. Yeah. Right there, there. I know. I just thought about that right now, but yeah, uh, that's, that's why. Mm -hmm. And then his heat bombs, like there's that panel in in that same Fubuki versus um or the new Fubuki group versus Rover fight. There's a big panel where like. You get that like um, eaten or fully eaten apple type thing, where the center core of the underground base is like half destroyed in an inward shape, and the rest of it's hollowed out. That's because of Rover's explosive orbs or whatever. That's why I'm like, I don't think Golden Sperm would be able to take an assault of that ferocity. Like it's to me, it's it's not even close. But I definitely see his tankiness as like the big question, right? Yeah, because like. I think, I think the real question is how well do the Heat Blast do against Golden Sperm? Because they're both very physically strong as well. They're both very physically tanky. The only difference is that the Heat Blast that Rover has is the only advantage I can think of on that. So we're not obviously we're not including like Black Sperm in this. It's literally just Golden Sperm on its own, right? Yeah, just Golden Sperm on its own. Cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I I do think Golden Sperm. I still it's weird because like I think I'm gonna stick with Golden Sperm. My I don't have much of an answer, but my but my heart is telling me go for gold. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that that side time my punch is keeping it out for me. And and then the, the mobility too. Like he was running after Goro, and then even in the Fubuki fight, like it wasn't. It's not like these guys were just walking around like. <coughs> Rover was getting after it, and and Golden didn't really move too much, besides like here or there, or they're like trying to save um homeless from Atomic. So I think he even has more mobility too. But let's let's I think we pretty much keep our points there. Bayard says uh, they're both really durable. Maybe they can't hurt each other. 
in that case, it either goes on forever or Golden eventually realizes Rover listens to dog commands. <laughs> I like that. that. Yeah. Uh, I would that. Oh, yeah, sure, I agree with that. Rover survived a normal punch, which Morata even cleared at the end of the chapter. Tank and nukes versus tank of brute strength. The downside of gold sperm will be if his regeneration will be longer to, to take him back up. Uh, yeah, yeah, he can't regenerate to me. No, I think that is like, yeah, I think that's set. Like, it's like a compact form. I'm, I agree with that. That isn't like the black sperm freedom. Uh, hero, heroin, heroin. Hirone, I think. Hirone, yeah, Hirone. 5337 says Rover is probably stronger than Golden Sperm, but Platinum Sperm totally dog walks him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, no, no one's questioning the Platinum Sperm thing, yeah. Cool. Uh, Rover claps. Dull. Uh, and now he says, uh, BS fusing, GS made him the strongest card rate, at least to me. That's fair, I think. There's arguments there, but that's what I like about Pudge. It's not a set power system. It's not just, oh, one person's the strongest, and it is very clear it's them. There's enough of an argument for other heroes, or monsters. Marshall8358 says, uh, GS beats him uh, beats him up high diff. I think we could say that pretty defi- Like, if whoever, whoever wins it is a high diff fight. Would you without agree on question. that? Without question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would love to see it. Maybe we will one day. Yeah. I think we got 184 votes on that, so that was probably like the most liked question since we started back up. Nice. Uh, is Blast capable of beating Empty Void on his own? Oh, I would hope so. It would be <laughs> nice. I like, honestly yeah, think I... right now the 201 is positioning it. Like, to me, 201, that's what 201 is showing. That Blast doesn't have, he isn't outmatched right now. Yeah. He's not overly concerned. Like, he's still very playful right now. Like, even when he saves them. Um, I, I agree. I think Blast has got it. I don't really have much else to say. We've got to see what goes on. Um, but we know the ninjas have a history of losing, too. Like, generally. That's fucked up. How could you say that but, but not understand when I clown Flashy, bro? Like, come on. <laughs> because, like, Flashy, but Flashy's the ninja who won. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, Flashy's I the little yeah. ninja. Who, he's the little ninja who could. The winning is of the ninjas. All right, I'll give you that. <laughs> but ninjas, I, you think about it, you're like, oh, the ninjas are cool, but how often do they actually win? It's like, <laughs> like, hey, guess what? I like Genos. Genos doesn't win all the time. <laughs> Genos usually loses. Exactly. That doesn't mean he's any less cool yeah, or yeah. good. I know you'd agree with that because you love Genos. Bro, Genos is oh my god, bro. Probably, probably one of the main reasons why I've read One Punch Man so long. Um, heroin uh, adds here. In my opinion, they're pretty close, but uh, Empty Void should still win. Ah, oh, okay. Um, how many Ks? That's like seven Ks. <laughs> Uh, triple six eight. Uh, human form void was comparable to Blast. Now Void has all cosmic Gara's power. Blast has been doing nothing but sneak attacking Void, and has and he never been able to do any damage at all because Void is just falling around recruiting people to serve God. Uh, maybe maybe I don't think he's just been falling around, but we'll we'll see. Yeah, he said the exact opposite that he's been he's been training. Yeah. Yeah, I think the uh, fact the fact that he fought cosmic like that may be why he's so nonchalant, as you pointed out. But, yeah, I mean, like he that, you got he was quick to counter the dimension slash immediately, not just himself, the whole hero association out of there. Bro, that was so fucking badass, bro. This it guy is, continues yeah. to prove himself, bro, every single time. That's that's right, one. Yeah, fair play to him. He got a, he's earned it. Um, Hisatsu, hard to tell. In a way, uh, in a way, I think he can. Uh, one sec. Because he's black, yeah. In a way, I think he can because he's blast after all. On the other hand, I believe they hyped up e- Empty Void for a good reason. And that reason is to make him so powerful that Blast cannot overpower him on his own. I have a strong feeling that Saitama has to show up, defeating Empty Void in front of a shot blast. That's fair, like, because he knows how strong. He knows Saitama would beat Garo, but if he beats Empty Void, is that going to change anything for him? Is he going to be, like, best casual with Saitama? See, that's the part that, like, 
I was I, I'm I'm acceptant of and I want to see how one's gonna play with it because there are levels to revealing how strong Saitama is. And I never would have thought about that. Because initially when you're reading the story, you're like, oh, this guy's just too strong. It's just going to be about him just one-shotting everything. It's not that. That's the first <coughs> subversion of that trope that he does. But even when the most highly anticipated moment in the series that he actually builds it up to. Though rightfully, one of the most highly anticipated moments in the series is when other people find out how strong Saitama is. Even when he gives it to you, he doesn't really give it to you. We saw what happened with Deep Sea King. Everybody in that dome saw Saitama pop Deep Sea King, pop a one shot. It incredulously didn't believe him. And like, and then there you got to the point where there's there's King, who he may know, or I feel like he's like the only one who knows how strong Saitama really is without having to have seen the power. Because Genos didn't know how strong Saitama was. Remember how he mentioned up against Goketsu? I, I just, think, yeah, it's difficult. I think he has a better idea now, like after fighting. Because obviously, like, no one, I still think no one ever truly gets to this day how strong Saitama is. Like, the one time I always think of was when Fubuki's like, you may be strong Saitama, but you're nothing compared to the likes of Blast and King. And it's like, okay, so she has no real clue. Exactly, yeah. On the strip. And also, like, Genos does, because he actually knows the other, Genos knows what happened in the other timeline, right? Genos knows what happened, like, with the fight on Io. Correct. So Genos is the only person who does know how strong Saitama can be. Uh-huh. But apart from that, everyone thinks, oh, you're pretty strong. But you're, but there's, but you're not top dog. That's generally the vibe. Yeah. No, but that, it's important to point that out because it, it is at that moment that Genos actually understood how strong Saitama really was. He didn't know how strong he was before that. And we didn't know. That was He got to that level of power, but Genos think- actually knows how strong Saitama is. Yeah, the closest we knew we knew how strong he is because obviously we just see him on his own. Like obviously the serious punch against Boros was the like perfect example. Of, oh, this is how fucking strong he is! Like he split the sky across the planet. Um, probably the only time before that is when after he beat EC because after everyone like after he threw over EC, Saitama showed up and one punched him. You know, someone who was at a similar level to Goketsu. That's probably the only other time that was close. But to get back onto the conversation piece. Uh, R. Cortez, he can handle him and win, but I don't think he can handle him while protecting Earth if he's fighting him. Empty Void is fast enough to disintegrate Earth if he wants to. That's, uh, that's possible. Like, do you think Blast will be, uh, put at a disadvantage because he'll be having to protect the planet at the same time? That, I wasn't looking at it like that, especially in a versus. I was more so looking at it like they're just going after each other. It's definitely plausible for, like, in a narrative... For there to be a reason as to why Blast is going after Empty Void, so that yeah, it, it's not like it doesn't make sense for sure. But I don't think we'd be in a position where we were with Sairochi to where Tatsumaki had to fly up and make sure that um, Sairochi wasn't aiming at the ground with those Earth Cutters because <laughs> we saw what the fuck happened. I don't think it would be like that. But do you think it's going to be if like Empty Void starts slashing around? Say he starts slashing up. It's like a city, for example, and Blast has to start focusing on getting people out of there so people don't get hit by dimension slashes. I mean, that's a that's a trope that I love to see in like any narrative. I wouldn't complain if we got that, especially with like how dynamic it could be. <coughs> but I would expect him to just like move us out of that arena so that we're not fighting in that arena anymore. Um, the fact that we've gone to different planets more than once here in these final fights, in these big fights, gives us all the avenue to assume we can go and do anything, bro. Like, we've literally... Somebody kicked the main character to the moon, bro. That happened in 36 chapters. And then now, in 100... What was it? 160-something? 170-something? We got kicked to Jupiter? (laughs) I'm... I'm fully okay just going, if this fight happens, like, all around the planet and they're just teleporting around, like, th- like imagine there's, like, there's a mountain section, there's an underwater section, they're falling through the sky section, like, because just the way the fight's going and their power set is, like, they can't, they don't stay in one place, they just keep moving, 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 moving. Mmm, because of their teleportation. Oh, okay, mm. okay, okay, I see you. That'd be, that'd be cool. That's, like, a cool set piece. I kind of don't hate if he doesn't do that because... I like it also, it's like the limit, like, set limitations of the fight can also benefit it greatly. Um, but I think that'd be very cool to see. Yeah, man, there's, there's, 
Oh. <laughs> There's so much potential with this battle. Yeah, bro. Yeah, there is. All right. Uh, I think we read all the comments. Uh, Cortez says he can handle him and win. Well, did you read Cortez already? Yeah, I read Cortez. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So let's keep it pushing. <laughs> He's those things. All right. Uh, let's see here. So next we have who can beat Black Sperm alone. This is alone? about right. Well, we got 184 <laughs> votes on this one too, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you think? Ah, oh. right. I, okay, I'll narrow it down. So, it's not vomited Fiora. Really? Right, but just to be clear, right? It's not. It's black sperm. He's not going gold sperm or platinum, right? Just got off the off the map. Yes, the implication was that it's it's just the entirety of black sperm. So he's he can still go into those trillions potentially, but he's not gonna go into the form that is platinum or golden. Actually, fuck, it might be, it might be Fiora. Yeah. That's what I was thinking, bro. He's the only one who's shown it besides maybe Geno's? Well, like, I think the thing is, the the scary thing about Black Sperm is the, is how many there are. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But that's the problem, is who's got the stamina to fight that, right? But Fiora is the only person I know who's, like, he gets constant sustenance to survive. And that is just by, like... Because he's, because he's part of Gums anyway. Um, he needs to keep basically, like, taking supplies to survive. And if he keeps basically, like, disintegrating black sperms, he's going to keep going okay. We don't know. I don't know if he's got, like, an actual stamina limit. Because his whole thing is just to survive, really. So fucking think it's Fiora. I never even fucking thought about it like that yet. Because whenever, whenever he, um, he melted the black sperms, he sucked them back up. So that's like more mass. That's adding more mass of, of what yeah. it is. Yeah. So he, that is a, an infinite source of fuel technically. Like the whole thing with black sperm is like if all guns push him to show up, I will just use my black sperm tsunami and decimate everyone. That was always the thing. And it's <laughs> not that like Genos or Flashy or Watchdog are incapable, but black sperm was fighting multiple S class at the same time. Yes, they were injured and tired. But that's still a fucking crazy thing to do, bro. That, that's, that's and he was beating their ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like they were just, it wasn't like zombies, you know, it wasn't like they were doing, like, basic. We've seen that, like, a single black sperm is pretty dangerous. Mm -hmm. Like, just from all these different fights. Like, the only, like, even the S-Class, maybe just Tatsumaki and Blast. I don't even know Blast, because I don't really know what Blast, everything Blast can do. But because we just know from Tatsumaki's moveset that she's a good match against him at full power, because she just fling them all up into space, or do whatever she wants to do. That's fine. But I think it's going to be vomited. And I know it's not the same. It's not a power thing. It's just a matchup thing. Vomit is going to take it, bro. And I think Mikey4204 agrees. Man, I can't wait to see Watchdog Man go full power. I bet he removed his limiter as well. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Man, I didn't even think about this. What if Watchdog Man has forms like uh, Phoenix Man does? Bro, the different types of dogs, bro. <laughs> right, yeah. Bro. He's got like a greyhound form for speed. Oh. He's got like a doberman form for sh like. Oh. He's got like a pitbull form for strength. Like oh. I don't think it'd be that, but that just clutched in my head, and that'd be fucking class. <laughs> oh shit, bro! Nah, to me, I think I think I'm also gonna go with um. Wow, and he got the least votes too, but it only makes sense that him or Genos would be able to. I I don't know how successful Genos was. I think he was popping the sperms, but it wasn't. He was doing good, but once again, it's a stamina thing for it. Like, there's just that many of them. That's yeah, all it that is. Like, like it's just he could he's got he could hold him off, but he couldn't he couldn't last. That's the only thing. Uh, what Bear say? Black sperm is to dragon levels what zombie man is to demon levels. He's weaker than every dragon level infused. There is no one who could be all fifty four trillion of him. That's right, it's fifty four trillion. Uh, in this group, Vomited is the only one that won't eventually lose a fist fight. But Black Sperm will still outlast him once he has a strategy to keep distance. That's fair. That is fair, bro. I think that guy has the best argument. Yeah. <laughs> um, Marshall says, Genos is a firepower, but if he gets in the melee, he's toast. And even if he leaves 100 Black Sperm, they can merge and beat him up when he's, uh, beat him up when he's out of energy. Vomited Fury, and that merge doesn't have to be one of the, um, a platinum or a golden sperm. He has that, 
that huge yeah, just, black just, spam just rate. Big, big mm-hmm. ones. Yeah, yeah, we're good with that. VFU uh, passively kills them and consumes them for more power. He's the top pick. Yeah. It, this is the first time where the comments are actually making sense, even though the poll isn't agreeing with them. It's, cause you, cause you, it's probably because you just scroll by and you're like, oh, uh, Genos, because Genos is like the guy. But when you think about it, you're like, actually. Because like I said, I said no to I said no to vomiting straight away, but then when I thought about it, I was like, no, it is probably vomiting. <laughs> He's no. like the only one, technically. Yeah. And like, <laughs> that's saying. And a lot. Th- there's also a good enough argument that say, "Hey, maybe none of them can." That's also an option too. It's like yeah. that's that's fair. I should have made that one. It's okay. That would have been the actual right option. Yeah. None crazy nor gamer says none. And Godspeed six nine eight zero says only Watchdog man if he if we base it off feats. Hmm. Okay. All right. Next we have, with 139 votes, which are you looking forward to more? A Neo Hero arc or a longer Ninja arc? Oh, Neo Heroes. Yeah, definitely Neo Heroes. Yeah? What's that? Yeah, like, well, we're getting Ninja arc right now. We've got Ninja arc. Ninja arc's good, but it's not good. I don't need it to be much longer. Where we've got good stuff, keep it short. Neo Heroes, we've built up. We've got some, like, mystery. We've got intrigue. We're going to get more focus on other characters. Um, we're gonna maybe like some civil war kind of s stuff, some political stuff. Oh yeah, for um, sure. Like that's what I mean. I'm intrigued in that kind of sense, and like side characters who we've gotten to know will hopefully shine a bit more too. And especially I'm like interested in, like these top brass and neo heroes. Like, what is their overall goal? Like, I'm sure we'll meet some just cool people in the neo heroes who were like, fuck, I wish you were in the hero association, man. You're you're class. Like, and I don't know. I, I'm curious to know what they do because we've obviously know about there's powerful people out there who aren't heroes. Like Swiri was like the prime example of that. Um, bomb. But, bomb. Exactly. Thank you. Bomb too. Um, but I want to see more. There's, this is where it's all building up to. I want to see where it goes. And the, because the world's going to change after this because things, things are weird at the moment. Things are just weird. What do you mean by that? The world's going to change. Well, I say that because right now a big focus of this arc is a lot of people are finding out about Saitama. Like, it is a lot. Like, in the space of how many people knew in the first um, few arcs, like, Genos, Bang, uh, King, Kabuki, uh, Bomb, Sonic. Like, uh, let's say that's like five or six. Since we've gotten to this arc, right? Tatsumaki, um, Beat. Oh, no, Moomin knew as well previously in Suru, actually, to be fair. So Tatsumaki, Kit, Amai, Flash, like there's a big focus on people learning the truth about side. That's what I mean. The, the focus. I That's like right. Is, Amai saw Metal world. Knight's footage, didn't he? Yeah. The 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 world Metal Knight as well, of course. Forgot about Metal. There's a big focus right now on people learning about Saito. And when that truth gets out on how strong he really is, that's game. That's world changing. I'm 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 anticipating that moment because I have no idea how that's gonna come out, and I wasn't even thinking about it like that. The way I've been looking at the story, bro, is that in the beginning we were getting like miscellaneous adventures, like maybe we would get a three chapter um, endeavor, like with the deep seeking scenario, but everything was kind of like sporadic, and then up until like the uh, the Boros fight, and then after that point, it was the seedings of the monster association art because we got the uh, the the attack the influx of mm-hmm. monsters different things like that that were coming from the monster association itself until it culminated into the the actual invasion assault um and then the the surface fight and all that it culminated into that but that was the first big arc it we were we slowly snowballed into that and then the like um when the hero association actually went to attack them that was a big um escalation in the in in the change of events because they were actually doing a coordinated attack but it was more so about that was the first real arc that we got. And then we got this law here with the whole Tatsumaki thing. I've kind of felt like, and what I'm excited for now after this ninja arc is that now we're seeding two big storylines. Like before it was just the monster associations coming and we're getting an influx of monsters. And there were a few things along the way, like the, the, the super fight happened to pop up, but that was associated with kind of associated with the, the monster association attack. 
I'm thinking that we get something bigger than the super fight arc, and it's going to be the neo or the the, the neo hero part. The neo hero part is going to be the storyline that comes secondary to the um to the empty void blasting because I don't want that to be resolved here anytime That's soon. Fair. Yeah. I want it to be looming in the background and major events or the consequences of these not minor but medium sized arcs happen to play in a benefit to the larger game. I'm not saying yeah. that. Go ahead. No, no, I was just agree with what you're saying. Yeah, please, Gara. I'm not saying that, like, Blast or Empty Void have to, or Empty Void is going to be, like, a shadow, like, um, villain that's controlling the things behind the scenes because that's how, like, what God's been doing so far, and I like it that way. But a more immediate, like, lieutenant role, like, Empty Void's playing, but present. So, like, let's say that the Neo Heroes, the leader of the Neo Heroes um, is working for or wants to be a disciple of Empty Void or gets approached by Empty Void at a certain point, something like that. I don't want it to be stereotypical like we got before to where at the end of the arc where the leader of the Neo Heroes is about to get clapped by whoever, then he comes and gets blessed. I don't want it to be like that. I don't want it to be something different and new. Like, ma make it to where, like, the female or, like, the guy in the back is really the one orchestrating and controlling everything. He's the one that got blessed, but the power that he received isn't some overwhelming destructive force. It's like some some crazy intellect shit or like strategy or, or something that's like not easy for, Sata for Saitama to defeat head on, that he would have to employ other methods or somebody else. Uh, honestly, I would want somebody else to resolve this next big arc and have Saitama deal with like the lieutenant. The lieutenant got the, the almighty boost of power and the actual leader is just brains and brawn and then Child Emperor or somebody like that has to take care of him. I would love to get a different dynamic, but what I'm trying to get at is that I agree that, the Neo, that I'm anticipating the Nero Heroes arc, but I want the Ninja arc to continue overarching that. Yeah, I think that's fair, yeah. So I'm just going to read the comments to start this off because I think this actually sums up quite well. So starting the video, he wants a longer Empty Void arc, not longer Flashy and Sonic arc, which I feel like is what you're saying there because you don't want Empty Void to go away, but you kind of want to move on from the Neo Hero. You want to move on from the Ninja stuff and focus on the Neo Hero. Agreed. There we go. Cool. If you want to read them all, bro. Yeah, sure. Ninja arc. Uh, Mario. The ninja arc wasn't what I was expecting, to be honest. I never really liked it that much in the webcomic. I hope it wraps up soon, or at least they make it more interesting. Okay. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i enjoying the ninja arc right now, I think. Um, but it's the same, because it's not that I'm not enjoying it, but I think it's because I, I know what we've got coming up in the near heroes, like what I'm excited to see. Not in like a web... I don't read the webcomic, just to be very clear. Just from the, the build-up from what we've seen. I, I want to see neo heroes. Um... Spectre, Neo Heroes, I'm kind of waiting for the Ninja arc to wrap up. So, yeah, same thing. I, I'll just read that, I think, anyway. Never mind. Um, Marshall, Neo Heroes by far. I want some plot that involves more of the basic heroes. A long arc of rivalries and fights from Tiger to Dragon level. Enough cosmic stuff for now. 100% agree with that. Agreed. Could not agree with that more. Yep. I'm, I'm so... I like, I like the high-level battles, that's fine. But what makes a good fight is two levels of equal opponents. Like... I mean, look, if there's two C or B class people going at it at similar levels, let's have that. Yes. That'll be fun. Because their fights, they'll, their fight schemes will be so basic that they'll be so creative with it too. Like, Murata will, Murata will fly with that stuff. We've, We've seen, seen him it do with, it. Yes. Like, literally with, like, the fight, Garo versus the A and B class, the, the raid on the Monster Association beginning, these are all examples of clever, creative opponent, like, fight styles that aren't overly powered or broken some it's of the most interesting part. parts of the arc were what you just mentioned exactly so there's good at seeing how these guys will change and grow 100 percent couldn't agree with that statement more uh sigma box i'm more excited to see how the ninja arc ends than i am seeing the neo heroes that's fair because we could learn some big stuff about um empty void and god by the end of this arc so i get that statement. i get that sentiment yeah uh he said to empty void versus blast arc couldn't care less for flashy flash or sonic that's that's up to him, I guess. I mean, I'm invested in especially uh, where Sonic's going right now, but I get it. It's two big boys about to hit each other really hard. Uh, so crispy bacon, uh, DB fan be like, I don't want, I don't want to know more how Empty Void shown to be weak. Is DB character is? So let's just vote to look forward to Neo Hierarch. It's kind of lame power scale in there. Um, I get, I get the sentiment. I think especially though with One Punch Man, and we said this, one of the strengths is you don't need to go from. The next opponent has to be stronger because it can't because it's pointless when our guy is the, the main character is the strongest guy. That's like, like one of the keys that makes One Punch Man successful. That we're not just scaling mm -hmm. upward. 
yeah, we can jump around to wherever because the threats are still there because we care about the characters and their development. So we can we can be still emotionally invested in like a tiger level threat in the same way we could be in like an above dragon. All right, it looks like this one favorite girl fight got a little bit more. Well, three more votes, and I think the other one was like one eighty four. Oh, we're climbing, dude. Okay, what so, have we got? I need to know. Dark. So we got Dark Shine versus Goro. We've got um, Super Alloy Goro versus Super Fang Bang. We've got Goro versus Blast, and we've got Metal Bat and Goro versus Sage Centipede. Oh, you're missing the best one. <laughs> okay, I'll pick. I'll pick out of these. Oh, I'm trying to think. Spectacle? I think I like a... Oh, I don't know. Because I wasn't going to say Metal Bat and Garo, and I don't think it is, but it does have some great moments. It does have some very good moments. Because uh, uh, my 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 hair says Bang versus Garo, because it has an emotional weight to it. It's very nice. Uh, and it's got some good character development for Bang. That impacted me on other series, too. Um, but Darkshine versus Garo was real good, too. Bro, they're, all good fights. they're all good. A Goro, it's you, a Goro fight is a good fight. That's just the, it's a fact. I'm gonna go for Bang. I'll go for Bang. I like I like the stuff they do with Bang in that fight. So, yeah. yeah. For me, it's between um. Well, they're all good, like I said. But I'm leaning towards Blast. But the length is what like holds me back because the 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 Bang fight like had the length and the choreography and every and all of that. Like ah. Uh, the uh, what. The one thing that is leading me, the only thing that is really leading me towards the Metal Bat one, is when Garo is in like the spot is in space, and that beautiful panel of him slicing Sage Centipede in half. That's what's that's the only thing in my head for that fight. That's putting me in there. Yep, the perfect fist top. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's so good, and like even just like the 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 line going into space of Sage Centipede and Garo flying ahead, that's amazing. I love that, but I can't give it to them. For that one to me it uh blast wins because of the hype of, of blast himself like it's it's the guy who we've seen <clears throat> throughout the entire story and now in his most powered up form up against the guy who we've heard about the entire story about to show his power and it was just a clash of like so many like highly anticipated moments not just from those two angles just in general like we're, we're now fighting at the level where like there are explosive nuclear blasts in the background like you're 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 killing people just by standing there with your radiation this guy's not being affected by it this guy has able to teleport this guy can create portals this guy's creating portals in a hand-to-hand -hand fight you haven't yep. hit this guy yet in your net what is going on bro i was this is this fight single-handedly is why i put blast over so many people and i hold him in so like so much of a high regard because i used to not like him i thought that he was just being hyped up i had like this vendetta of like the webcomic community where i was associating him as like a representative of the webcomic community and then when i saw him bro like oh my god bro <sighs> yeah that's fair like i don't that's not really about it's all about your favorite on this one there's not a wrong answer it's just whatever you prefer the last thing I'll say before we go on to what Marshall said is that the um, the atmospheric um, viewpoint that we got in the Sage fight. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's beautiful. Marshall says, nothing beats the energy that Darkshine and Goro uh, gave off. The limiter breaking, Darkshine being the powerhouse we wanted to see fighting since forever. Goro being at his best performance. It was. Agreed. It's good. I mean, this is the thing. Like, it's so good. <laughs> uh, one joke. Garo before modification is my favorite character in One Punch Man. I loved his charisma and when he was in human form. How he was so badass, even when he was strong against A-class heroes, adapting and overcoming great forces through sheer rage, observation, and determination to be the representation of evil that's actually going to win in the end. Like one cool, edgy, but empathetic man against the principles of the universe. It all got lost for me, though, after his fight with Darkshine. I'd put his fights against Metal Bat, A-Class Squad, even the tiny bits of confrontation against Rover, Ripper, and Orochi. High of end opinions 2, 3, 4. Fight against Darkshine was peak. 
How he used both bang and bombs techniques with each hand to break Dark Shadow's defense is godlike. Adapting to his opponent's strength, getting beaten up to deflecting his attacks with one finger, breaking his limited during fight, man, wants he suffer like that again. Some fair points there, obviously a good observation of Garo. Um, big fan. Like this is, I think I've seen this in a couple of the comments when I was skimming through, is people are like, you should have put this fight in. That shows the level of Garo fights where it's not as easy as, oh, this fight should go in, this fight should go in. Like if there was like a definitive full fight for Garo. You could put in any fight for Garo and people would have been saying, oh, you should put this fight in. I will say that the tank top fights are on the lower end for me. I, I like it. It's a great introduction for him. It definitely was, though, for sure. Uh, Goro417 says, My favorite fight in the manga is Goro versus the group of eight class heroes in the forest. Yeah, like we talked about. Goro starts to fight off exhausted, so he has <clears throat> to use battle IQ, adaption, martial arts skills, and raw willpower to come out to come out on top. Peak fiction for me. Sigcox says, Should have dropped Sage for Goro versus Genos. <laughs> And then Natty is a uh, who the f voted for Metal Bat fight. <laughs> Relax, bro. That 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 should have been on there. Metal Bat versus Garo. I'm gonna just have it on record. Garo versus Orochi was my choice. That's my favorite. Ah, uh, yeah, I knew. I remembered. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's too good. It's too good. We're gonna have to do another Garo favorite fight one. Um, this one got 129. Um, would Bomb have fared better against Garo compared to Bang if he was fresh? So 86% of the people say Goro would have evolved past him. Instead of yeah. Bomb's best is greater than Bang's. Hmm. Yeah, I think they're too comparable. I don't think it's it's not far for between Bang and Bomb. No one would say like if it's like a low diff fight between either of them against the other one. Oh, for sure. I, I was just going, I made that the case because um, I remember reading that, um, I think it was Morata or one that said that Bomb is the stronger of the two, but I, I definitely agree that there's no implication that either of them is substantially stronger. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that is a general consensus. That's fair. Yeah. Um, this random guy says he used a great amount of energy to heal Tank Top from the imminent from imminent death. Surely must have been an insane amount just thinking about it. Then we went on to put a decent fight to put on a decent fight against Garou. As far as I know, it isn't confirmed Bomb cannot use Awakening Breath as he already basically exhausted his energy. That's not how that works, bro. You can't say Owen. Oh, it's not confirmed that he can't use it. <laughs> I mean, it's trying to start time to shoot lasers. So, you know, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Marshall says... We even don't his... know. It's fair. Go on. Sorry, cut you off. <laughs> um, Marshall says, even at his best, Bomb still hasn't shown signs of using the Awakening Breath. <laughs> Same thing, bro. Let alone the explosion fist, which he thought he could defeat Goro. So bang. That doesn't mean that the whirlwind isn't superior to either of those styles. Um, you remember the whirlwind beat the explosion fist. Yeah, literally. Oh, yeah, literally yeah. beat it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Uh, Fred, it says, people forgot that Bomb got mad energy taken away by Fubuki to help heal Tank Top Master. Goro still would have beat him, but it definitely would have been a much a bit more competitive fight. Also, Bang might have gotten there before Bomb was taken down so they could fight Goro together again. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Uh, Cortez, except from Darkshine's case, if he didn't stop after crushing the uh, shit out of Goro's ribs... He literally has all the time in the world to end his life at that moment. So that Darkshine has a hero's mentality, except from losing. Okay. Um, then Rain. Neither Bomb nor Bang knew uh, he could cross Bang's Skyrokun fist. They were both shot. Only reason Bang lasted was because he was purely defensive. Bomb is stronger than Bang, but much weaker than Garo, and more susceptible to getting hit. No evolve needed, to be honest. But, okay. That's, That's crazy. Better. I mean, he was pretty... He was pretty freaked out at that point, so it's not end of the world. I don't think it's crazy enough to say. Uh, and then Chungus. Bang is stronger than Bomb. Bomb did not lose against Garo because he ran out of energy or was tired. He lost because Garo was a better fighter. That's, yeah, I think that's fair. I think age, it takes a part of that too, but still. Alright. We may not do all of these. I'll probably like leave the last four for the next one. Tell, give give us a give us an ending one. That's fine. 
to tell say we'll go up to a certain point. Yeah. Oof. Um. The last one we'll do is the dimensional slash because I want to end it at around an hour. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's fine. Three more minutes out. Sweet you versus a my mask with 142 votes. This is ridiculous. I want it. I want it to be swear you. I want it to be swear you. Bro. Bro. Oh, fuck. I Wait, are you saying that you also think it's a my mask? I don't know. That's what I hate. Oh my god, bro. I have no question in my head. He's actually shown it. We saw what he could do. Amai's done nothing but like, and and in the time period, no, this is the actual reason, because I think I'm justified and it's fair to say this. He's gotten a multitude of chances to show out and to actually be effective up against competent individuals, and he's the one that hasn't done it. And it's not because of some, like, heinous, held back reason, like it wasn't some obvious thing as to why he couldn't do it. This guy was literally scared. He said he couldn't handle confronting that type of threat. And I know it wasn't because of a, a difference in power. It was simply because of who it was. That's not okay, bro. That's not okay. Can I, can I ask you a question? This Shrew account, is it the Shrew we've seen or is it going to be the Shrew that we're going to see when he's back in shape? This is the Shrew we've seen. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't... I just, I hate I'm debating this because I'm like, screw you, fuck on my mask. In Bro. my head, look, my, my bias is just playing in my head. I'm like, I like swear you, and my mask annoys me. Come on, swear you. Bro, just right. say it is three. Bro, we saw him what the Void Fist did up against not only Goketu, but Saitama. Why, why do I think, why am I leaning towards a Mai then? This is what I'm trying to figure out. Because. Maybe the comments can help me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> So wow, uh, right, uh, Tariq. Am I masking the web comic for stronger than most S class? Okay, we don't we don't read the web comic here, so I'm I'm sorry, but maybe it's different. Uh, Leo Abdul, uh, it's obviously the crazy sweet mask, bro. Alongside a few was like Flash, Atomic, Tatsumaki, Genos, are the kind that goes with the killing blow with their from their first move. I mean, it's not that Suryu doesn't, but like. We don't know if Suryu does, it's just more Suryu likes to play. Like, we have seen him do that kind of things in the super fight, but the whole point was he's like, oh, side time beats him with punches, oh, I'll beat him with kicks then. And then I'll read my keys. We're talking uh, before the tournament or after tournament, because he almost died, so that makes me believe his limiter will be broken. I don't think Suryu's limiter's going to get broken, but like, he'll definitely come back stronger. Five Raptor Boy says could make S class if he wanted to versus would be S class if he said so. Um, I'm going with the guy who showed me that he's clapping everybody. <coughs> uh, Mike six oh six oh six says, oh, "My mask has crazy regeneration, and he's at least as fast and as strong as Suryu." You uh, disagree. Spec to A says, "Well, I can't answer because we have the answer in the webcomic. Uh, we already heard about that, and it's not the same." Uh, Multiple Ks. <laughs> Transformed and Mai may have more power, but screw you have skill. I should have prefaced this as like no webcomic comments. I don't know what Mai transforms into if he transforms. Um, that could or could not be a spoiler. You could be talking about like regular Mai, but I think yeah. you're not. We'll, we'll just be very clear. No one on the podcast reads the webcomic. Um, if you can avoid webcomic stuff, we'd appreciate it. Because you can sit there and, and laugh and giggle because you know what's going to happen. And then you can laugh and react to us when we find out what's going to happen. Like, still stick around because it'll be funny. But don't don't spoil. I know you had good intentions there. Just take it easy on any web comic spoilers. I'm not worried. I usually forget because it's insignificant. But still. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, Sonic versus Awakened Cockroach. <laughs> I will admit I was being biased and I was trying to... <laughs> Let's try to try Sonic. <laughs> I'm glad everyone used common sense. <laughs> oh shit. Let's just push past this one unless you want to read these. I'll quit read for Alright. Hey, if anyone's got any good points. Any any uh pre monster yeah. So if we're talking with Chrono Sonic, then yes, no question. Um but pre Sonic hey, this is a bait for pre. Uh yeah, everyone's just like, what is the point of this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, to sum it up, it was like, Sonic's Sonic, yes. <laughs> Alright, last one before we head out. Dimensional Slash versus Tatsumaki's Drill. 
Oh. I disagree with this one too. Because to me, the principal reason as to why somebody would think it's a dimensional slash is because of the speed and like the ab abruptness of the attack. But this drill to me was more destructive. Yeah, I I agree with you. I think there might be some recency bias on there too. Like, For sure. I I think uh, the dimensional slash is very 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 impressive, but didn't like the the drill like mess up the entire city, which is pretty much a country. Yeah, no, that this guy. What happened? J just in her lifting up the base, she started twisting and stuff. That l messed up the entire country. Yeah, a hundred percent. And then she made this. Yeah, there's there's like no scale here, bro. The the Hero Association base is not the size of like a country or even like a city. It's it's not that grandiose. Well, <coughs> no, you're right. I was gonna say it's the sea, but you're right. It's not because it's loads of wasteland around it. Mm -hmm. And the city that was there, a city expand or expanded much, much uh, more of a, of a larger area than what the empty void slash managed to cover. Also, uh, for anyone who disagrees with us, flashy fans, you may remember that uh, a certain sword is mixed in with Tatsumaki's drill, so a bit of extra attack power there. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? So, uh, hey, uh, hell no, flashy, bro. I would see this actually as Tatsumaki and Flashy's drill. Nah, no, <laughs> tighten like, up, bro. The, the, the suck. The pair of them uh, beat them. So, Jeez, you know. bro. You know, I mean, look. Look, it took Gen look Geno's helped out. Flashy helped out, too. That's all it is. Maybe Flashy suck is inherent in certain people. Jeez, man. Uh, so, Wonju says Tatsumaki slaps. I don't care. Agreed. Uh, Jem Jamolo didn't. Lao on says, nah, Empty Void's attack is deadlier. Empty Void's dimensional slash over Tatsumaki's fodder drill attack. You're, you're a clown, bro. Um, and then A1 Man of twenty of 2004 says, Tatsu manipulating object versus E-Void folding dimensions into bubbles. So slash dimensions. That's that's just how you choose it to word it. Cause yeah, be like, bro. You could choose Ninja grabs bubble and slices or... Lady manipulates the very continent into a drill and slams it into the ground. <laughs> it's all about the, that's your word on that one, mate. Uh, Jamal uh, Now, Empty Void's attack is Mordelio. Empty Void's dimension slash well over the father. I will definitely give it in terms of the speed. That's probably the main thing. Like, in terms of how fast the dimension slash actually fucking works, that's the main thing that makes it more deadly. If you, that's an argument, but the dr but the drill's very nasty. Tax my stuff to care. Yeah, oh, you read that one, I think. Uh -huh. uh, I, I went from yeah. the bottom up. Oh, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. uh, so Bill, oh, Mr. Joe, President Biden, how are you doing, sir? Um, it feels good being first. No, yeah, good on you. Uh, Mike, uh, I feel like Voice could easily destroy the planet. He's not trying to do that. Him and Gomer recruit more avatars to fight Saitama. Yeah, so uh, Lobex void one shots the drill or Tatsumaki because that's a different question. Yes, yeah, a different question. Uh, yeah, okay, Leo. Uh, you're not seeing how small the dimension slash made the entire association. Tatsumaki's drill is cool, but if you want to top this, you'll have to call Sirochi Earth cutting slash. But I know Tatsumaki's moves are usually stronger, which is fair too. Yeah, I disagree okay, with that. But... Leo I mean, so far has like been credible. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, boys. So that's been it for this session of the One Punch Man podcast. Like I said, um, chapters come out bi-weekly, but anytime that we don't have a chapter coming out, we'll be doing this for the podcast, um, and we'll be, we will be covering it regardless bi-weekly, so stay tuned for that. Um, hop onto these, like these, like the videos, like this video, so that we can continue to, to snowball and grow. Um, we already reached our 3K mark. We're about to reach 4K. The goal is 10. Let's get it pumping. Yo-ho!